Hi, welcome to the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy e-learning program. I am one of your maths facilitators, Joseph Frederick, and in this video, we shall be looking at the topic of algebra. Now, algebra is a very large topic in mathematics. And so, for these series of videos, we shall be looking at a basic, in, a basic algebra. And in our basic algebra, we shall be doing an introduction to algebra, then we shall move on to the another video will be done on the distributive law. Another video shall be done on factorization and another one on algebraic fractions and in equations and equations. So look forward to these upcoming videos as we develop basic algebra. In, basic, in the, our introduction for today, the objectives that we want to achieve are one, to define algebra and the associated terms in algebra. The second objective is to be able to evaluate the value of an algebraic expression once those, the values of the variables are known. Our third objective, our third objective is to simplify algebraic expressions utilizing our oper operations with algebra, algebraic terms. And our fourth objective is to perform calculations utilizing binary operations. So, we are looking at algebra. The first question that you have to ask yourself is, what is algebra? According to our definition, algebra is a, the study of mathematical symbols and the laws that govern their manipulations. Now, with algebra, almost anything is a symbol. I could utilize a cup to represent the weight of my shoe. But here, formally, what we generally utilize in algebra are the letters of the alphabet. And more particular, as you would know, that letter X. Most people seem to create, would have created so many jokes in mathematics as it relates to X. So most problems in mathematics ask, would ask you to either simplify utilizing X or to solve a problem that involves X. Now, these symbols that we are utilizing in algebra, these symbols are what we call our variables. We now know what variables are. Variables are the symbols that we utilize in mathematics to represent uh, certain quantities. The next definition that we want to look at is algebraic term. In mathematics and in algebra, we would often speak to algebraic terms. What are these? Algebraic terms are either single numbers or variables or a combination of both joined together by multiplication. And here we have some examples of algebraic terms. 5x squared y cubed, 5am squared, and so forth. Now with your algebraic terms, there are certain features that we need to look at. The first feature that we shall look at with your algebraic term is the one that we spoke to already, your variable. Your variable is basically the symbol that you utilize to represent a number whose value we don't presently know. So here, in, for this algebraic term, this A represents some number. I would hear students saying from time to time that that number is 1. That is not necessarily true. This variable can take, it's possible that it is any number that you know. It may be my age, 56. In, a, in addition to variables, another feature of an algebraic term is the coefficient. The coefficient is the number in front of the term. Once we have written a term in standard form, you are expected to write the number or the constant in front of that term. So we usually give that a particular name in mathematics. The name that we give to that constant in your algebraic term is the coefficient. And finally, for algebraic terms, the other feature is that of an exponent or power. Your exponent or power, this is the number of times the variable must be multiplied by itself. So here, the exponent of power here is 2. So what it says here is that this a is being multiplied by itself. It's a squared. This a is being multiplied by itself 2 times. So it's a times a. Now, please bear in mind that algebraic terms can have more than one variables. So I can have an algebraic term, 7x squared y cubed. 
here I have two variables, variable x and variable y. The exponent of power on x here is 2, like with this a, so it means that this x here is being multiplied by itself two times. It's x times x, that is x squared. And the exponent of power on this y here is 3. What that indicates is that this y is being multiplied by itself three times. y cubed is y multiplied by y multiplied by y. Now, look here. In the previous video, we defined some things. We defined coefficients, variables, exponents. Look here. This, in this here, we have, I'm assuming, that we have some variables, some coefficients, and exponents. Can we identify them? Here, we have an algebraic expression. 4a squared plus 7a minus 3. We shall discuss what are algebraic expressions as we go on. Now, for this algebraic expression, it has one, two, three terms. Now, as we said before, algebraic terms, algebraic terms are made up of coefficients, variables, and exponents. Let's look at each term in this expression. Looking at each term in this expression, can we identify what the coefficients, the variables, and exponents are? Here, for this term, 4a squared, the variable Again, the symbol that represents the number whose values we don't know, the variable here is going to be a. The coefficient, the number in front of your algebraic term or the constant for your algebraic term, that coefficient here is 4. And the exponent? The exponent tells you the number of times that the variable has to be multiplied by itself. Our exponent here is 2. What about the next term? 7a. 7a, the variable here again is a. The coefficient here is 7, and the exponent is, drum roll please, when you are working in algebra and some variable has no exponent, it does not mean that the exponent is 0. What it means is that the exponent is 1. So here, for this a, there was no exponent that we can see, but we still had an exponent. What is that exponent? That exponent is 1. And finally, here, this here, 3, is still an algebraic term. Remember, in our definition of algebraic term, we said that it can be constants, variables, or a combination of them, joined together by multiplication. So this 3 is an algebraic term. It has no variables that we can see. A coefficient, we can say that it has a constant, and the constant is 3. So constant or coefficient here is 3. And the exponents... There are no variables, so in terms of the exponents that we are looking for in algebra, we would say that there is no exponent. Because in order for us to say there's an exponent for us in algebra, our argument for this basic algebra causes that there must be a variable. But this here is still an algebraic term. Look at our second one. M square, M n squared. What are the variables here? The variable for this first term here is, that's right, it is m and n. m and n are the variables. And what is, what is the coefficient? Again, here, I see no coefficients at constants or numbers in front of my algebraic term. Here, I am seeing no number or no constant. Does that mean that none exists? That is not true. It means that the coefficient or number in front of the variable here is 1. So the coefficient here is going to be 1. And the exponents. Now, given that we have two variables for this term, we need to speak to the exponent for each of these variables. So for my m, the verb exponent for m is going to be equal to 1. And for n, the exponent for n is going to be 2. Look at our next term here. It is negative... It is negative 9m cubed n. What is the coefficient here? The coefficient here is going to be negative 9. That's right. We must utilize their signs when we are working them. So I looked up here and I recognized that you did not say, but there was a slight error here. The coefficient here is actually, or the constant, is negative 3, not just positive 3. So bear that in mind. Don't make that mistake. Remember that when we are working with our algebraic terms, we must utilize the signs 
that come in front of them. So it's either they are positive or negative. What are our variables here? Our variables here are m and n. And our exponents, again, we have two variables. So the expectation is that we are going to also have two exponents. The exponents for the m, exponent for m here is equal to 3, and the exponent for n is equal to 1. And finally, as, as, as the one above, our constant here is 5. It has no variable and it has no exponent. The exponents that we are looking for are the exponents that are associated with our variables. And since there are no variables here, then we are going to make the argument that in terms of the variables, in terms of the variables, none exist here and there is no exponent. Yeah? Now, as we go along, we are going to expand it a bit and make that argument that the variable, given that this is a term in m and n, we could actually write this here as 5m to the 0, n to the 0. But as we go along, we shall discuss that. This is only our introduction to algebra. So for now, we shall see that there are no variables and that the exponents also don't exist for now. So we have looked at thus far what are variables? We said variables are symbols that we utilize to represent numbers. We then looked at, when I combine some variables with some constants, what do I get? We get algebraic terms. Now, here we want to look at what are algebraic expressions. And we are saying that algebraic expressions are a combination of variables, constants, and algebraic operations. They are slightly different to algebraic terms. Here we have some algebraic expressions. And as you can see, that they are slightly different to our algebraic terms. The algebraic terms, algebraic terms are going to be the individual entities that are usually joined together by multiplication. So 3x is an algebraic term, 5y is an algebraic term. Brought together, we have our algebraic expression. Algebraic term, algebraic term, brought together, we have our algebraic expressions. And all of these here are examples of algebraic expressions. Remember this. This is very important. Algebraic expressions do not have equal signs or inequality signs. So when asked to write an algebraic expression, remember that there are no equal signs and no inequality signs in our algebraic expressions. So, now that we have discussed what algebraic terms are, what algebraic expressions are, are, and variables, can we convert statements that we would utilize in our daily lives into algebraic statements or algebraic expressions? Look here at this example. Here, you must guess the quantities of snacks that we have in each tin in order to win. If you can guess right, I can assure you that we, there's going to be a prize for you. So guess and win. Now, anybody who has done algebra would get this here 100% correct. Why is that? Because in algebra, we are saying that in algebra, we usually represent quantities whose values we do not know symbolically. So here, for my first tin of snacks, given that each tin has the same amount, my first tin of, tin of snacks, I would give, or I would assign, I would assign the value of x. There are x snacks inside of this tin. And since each snack has the same amount, or each tin has the same amount, then this is going to contain x snacks, x snacks, x snacks. So in total, I am going to have there are x snacks here, x snacks here, and x snacks here. So in total, I'm going to have 1x, 2x, 3x's. The total amount of snacks that I would have here is 3x snacks in total. A worded question that reflects this example here is this. How many snacks are there in three cans given that each can has the same amount? It's the same thing. We are going to say this snack contains, or this tin contains X amount of snacks. This tin contains X amount. This tin contains X amount. So in total, how many snacks do we have in all? Again, the answer is the same. It is 3X snacks. Let's look again at expressing statements that we would utilize in everyday life into algebraic or in the form of an algebraic expression. Here, write algebraic expressions to represent the total cost 
of five mangoes, two mangoes, sorry, and five oranges. So there are two mangoes. What we shall do is that we shall assign oranges with a symbol. In algebra, remember what we said, that we utilize these symbols or variables to represent quantities whose values we don't presently know. At this present time in my question, I don't know the course of an orange or the course of a mango. So what I'll, I would do is that I would assign the course of an orange with a symbol. In this instance, I'm going to assign it with the symbol M. N, sorry. And the course of a mango, I would assign with a symbol of M. So if I have, if I have two mangoes and the course of a mango is M, then the course of this mango is going to be M, the course of this one is going to be M. I have two mangoes, so therefore the course of the two mangoes is going to be 2M. I have five oranges. We indicated earlier that the course of an orange, given that we don't know the, present, the price presently, the course of an orange is N. So each of these oranges will carry a course of N. I have five of them, so the course of those five oranges is going to be 5N. And therefore, the total cost of my oranges and my mango is the cost of my mangoes and the cost of my oranges. The cost of my mangoes is 2M. The cost of my oranges is 5M. So the total cost is 2M plus 5N. So we, looked, we are looking here at utilizing algebraic expressions to represent problems or statements that we would make in everyday life. Here's a problem that we may have. Today is Sekani and Victor's birthday, and Sekani is twice as old as Victor. We want you to write an algebraic expression to represent Victor's age. There's no inside here that they gave us Victor's age. As we stated earlier, that we utilize algebra to represent quantities whose values we don't know. So given that we don't know Victor's age, we shall assign Victor's age with a symbol. That symbol is going to be, in this case, yes. X. We use X a lot in algebra. And here's what the problem said. The problem said that Sekhan is, is twice as old as Victor. If Sekhan is twice as old as Victor, what would Sekhan's age be? 2 times X and 2 times X here is going to give me 2X. And that's how we write it. It's twice as old as Victor. Now here's another question that follows on from it. Write an algebraic expression to represent Sekani's age 10 years from now. So today is their birthday. 10 years from now, how old will Sekani be? What is Sekani's present age? Presently, Sekani's present age algebraically. We do not have the actual number just yet. But algebraically, Sekani's present age is 2x. 10 years down the road, if my present age is 56. 10 years down the road, how old would I be? Correct is right. I am 56. 10 years down the road, I would have to add 10. So we do the same thing for Sekani. Presently, his age algebraically is 2x. 10 years down the road, we are going to have to add, say it's 2x is his present age, we are going to have to add 10 to that 2x, giving us 2x plus 10 as his age. Now, in addition, in addition to writing common statements algebraically, sometimes we take algebraic expressions and we represent those algebraic expressions utilizing statements. We shall head to that shortly. But let's, let's look at some more examples of expressing statements in the algebraic form. Here we have 7 times a number m. What would 7 times a number m be? So I have a number m and I want 7 times that number. 7 times that number is going to be 7 times m. And 7 times m is going to be, correct is right, 7m. This is how we write 7 times m in algebra, simply 7m. Look at another example. The product of two consecutive numbers, if the smaller number is p. The product of two consecutive even numbers, two consecutive even numbers. Ensure and read your questions properly when working them. So here, it's the product of two consecutive even numbers. If the smaller number is P, hmm, two consecutive even numbers. Sometimes, when I'm working my problems in algebra, 
What I do is that I utilize actual numbers to ensure that I understand it properly. So we want the product of two consecutive even numbers. Let's see, even numbers. If I had an even number where the smallest number was four, what would the next, the next number be? Two consecutive numbers. The smaller one is four. What would the next number be, the next even number? The next even number is going to be six. Two consecutive even numbers where the smaller number is 14. What would the next number be? The next number is going to be 16. Two consecutive even numbers where the smaller number is 20. What would the next number be? The next number is going to be 22. So here we have a situation where we are looking at two consecutive even numbers where the smaller number is p. How do we get the next number? Well, for so far, what we did was to look at actual numbers. When the smaller number is 4, the next even number was 6. How do I get the next even number? To get the next even number, to get the next even number, what we did was to add 2. Here again, the smaller number is 20. What's the next even number? We added 2. Here, smaller number 14, next even number, we had to add 2 as well. So, if the smaller number is p, how do we get the next even number? We take that p and we add 2 to that p. So now, the smaller number is p, the next number is going to be p plus 2, and the question asks us not just to state the two numbers, the question asks us to give the product of the two numbers given that the smaller number is p. So, we would have to take this number here, the p, and multiply it by this, all of this number. To show that we are taking this number p and multiplying it by all of this number p plus 2, because this, the next even number is p plus 2, to show that, what we are going to do is to take uh, my small number, multiply it by, the next number is all of p plus 2. So what we do is that we take that p plus 2 and we put that p plus 2 in the brackets. What the brackets here indicate is that all of this here in the brackets is being multiplied by this p in front here. So the answer here is p brackets p plus 2. In multi multiplication is an interesting aspect for us in mathematics and in algebra as well. So here, as we go on. Very interesting multiplication. So basically, we know that 3 times 4, basically we know that 3 times 4 is written like this. Now in mathematics, sometimes we write 3 times 4 as 3 brackets 4. The brackets here, number then brackets, indicates that multiplication is occurring. There are some other conventions that we utilize to represent multiplication in mathematics. So we do 3 multi cross product 4 or we do put one number then the other number is placed in a bracket that means multiplication but this also means multiplication bracket 3 bracket 4 again it means 3 multiplied by 4 so bear that in mind as we go on along in this video you would see me utilizing different conventions to represent multiplication the all mean multiplication 3 times 4 is 12 3 brackets 4 is 12 and 3 in brackets 4 in brackets also multiplication is going to give us 12 so let's move on here look at another uh, case where we need to represent a statement algebraically the sum the square of the sum of two numbers a and b so the square of the sum of two numbers a and b so i want the square of the sum that's what i want here we want the square of the sum so the first thing that we are going to find is the sum what is the sum of the two numbers a and b we want the square of the sum so, the sum of the two numbers A and B is going to be sum of A and B is going to be, what sum again? Sum is the, that's right, 
addition. So it's going to be A plus B. That's the sum of A and B. Now I want the square of the sum. The square of the sum here is going to be A plus B. That's the sum, and I'm squaring all of it. Again, I put all of it in brackets to indicate that we are squaring all of it. Remember to utilize your brackets. So it is brackets A plus B squared, the square of A plus B. Another one. Three times the sum of two numbers, x and y. Three times the sum of two numbers. Again, it's three times. It is three times. Three times the sum of two numbers. So again, we first have to find the sum. It's the sum of two numbers, x and y. So the sum of x and y, the sum of x and y is going to be the sum, and that's right, addition between them. It's the sum of x and y. So the sum of x and y is the sum of x and y. And now we, what we want is three times that sum. Because the sum is all of this, and we want the 3 to be multiplied by all of this, what we shall do, what we shall do is that we shall take that all of this, x plus y, and put it in brackets. And it's going to be 3 times that. Remember what we said, that multiplication, this 3 times x plus y, we can write that as simply 3 brackets x plus y. And that is 3 times x plus y. And there we have our answer. It is, our answer here is three brackets, x plus y. It's three times the sum of x and y, as we did see. So sometimes you are asked to represent an statement algebraically. Sometimes you are given an algebraic statement. And you are asked to represent that algebraic statement utilizing words. We want to look now at converting from algebraic expressions to statements. Before, we looked at converting from statements, worded statements, into algebraic expressions or into algebraic statements. Here we want to convert our statements from the algebraic statement into a worded statement. My first statement here is 9m. What does 9m mean? Let's just go back a bit. Here, we were able to create 7m. We said that 7m is 7 times the number m. So 9m, therefore, will be 9 times a number m. It's going to be 9 times a number m. What about this one? 4a plus 7b. 4a plus 7b. Now, here's this. If 9m is 9 times a number m, then 4a is going to be 4 times a number a. And 7b is going to be 7 times a number b. So, here we have 4 times a number a being added to 7 times a number b. When we are adding, we usually say we are finding the sum. So, here we can say that this is the sum of 4 times a number a and 7 times a number b. It's the sum of 4 times a number a and 7 times a number b. What about this one? Let's just go back a bit. Let's just go back. So when we were working our, our converting from statements to algebraic expressions, we had this case where we looked at the square of the sum of two numbers, A and B. Now, here, this is what we have. We have x minus y bracket squared. Now, x minus y is finding the difference. We are subtracting. That's finding the difference. So here we can say, this here is the difference, but we're squaring that difference. So it's the square of the difference of two numbers, x and y. What about this one? Here, I have three brackets, m minus n. Remember what we said, that number then brackets in mathematics means multiplication. So this here is three times, but three times what? It's three times in the brackets here, we have m minus n. m minus n is subtraction, but it's also the difference. So this here is three times the difference of what? The difference of two numbers, m and n, plus five times the square of a third number, p. It is 
three times the difference of two numbers, m and n, plus five times the square of a third number, p. So we, we have looked at converting from an algebraic statement to a worded statement, and then we looked at converting from worded statements to algebraic statements and vice versa.